My name is Brian Scribonia, and on this episode of the Common Sense Financial Podcast. When health improves, everything improves. This is where uh, a lot of people, they spend their life accumulating wealth and they neglect their health in the process. And uh, so, you know, the people who run in our circle, Brian, are entrepreneurs who are very ambitious. And when they focus on their health, the business improves, their relationships improve, everything improves. Well, hey, everybody, and thank you for listening and joining us today. We hope that this podcast can provide you with some insights to help you grow and get closer to your goals this year. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to this podcast. That way you'll be notified about new content and you'll be able to listen to Brian tackle a variety of different topics. So you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, pretty much anywhere that podcasts can be found. And all the links to subscribe as well as past episodes are available on the website at brianscribonia.com. So thanks again for tuning in and let's get started. Opportunities are still there. The attempt at passing down wealth from generation to generation. Consider the outcome, not just popular opinion. And the whole teaching there is about preparedness and being ready. There's a difference between what's real and what's true. You're listening to the Common Sense Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Scribonia. Thanks for tuning in and let's get into today's topic. Well, hey, Reagan, it's good to see you. I appreciate you coming on the show and um, just thanks for joining me today. Good to be here, Brian, and I'm, I'm happy to, to talk about health. It's going to be fun. Yeah, well, I really look forward to the talk today. You know, what we're going to cover today has been on my heart for some time, you know, being in the money business. Uh, we talked a little bit about this already. You know, I work with retirees a lot. You know, people are focused on building wealth, um, entering retirement. But, you know, if you are focused on retirement, building wealth, and then you get there and your your health declines quickly and you get sick, like there's no quality of life and, and all of it's kind of set to the wayside. So I really do view retirement planning and health health planning, just being fit and being preventative, uh, makes a ton of sense. And so I wanted to bring you on today to kind of introduce some things to, to clients in our audience um, uh, that maybe they haven't heard of before, you know, because when we talk about uh, some, um, some of these types of uh, treatments and preventative measures and things like that, just, it's just not taught anywhere. Um, and I deal with that too in our business, you know, which is why the podcast is a great platform, just kind of introduce things to people that maybe they're not even thinking about. So uh, monetary future and then investing in health. So, um, but just for the audience's purpose, you know, you and I met, I don't really know how long ago it was, uh, maybe about a year ago, uh, we were in Chicago at a strategic coach and um, Dan was just talking about health, health stuff, Dan Sullivan. And um, he introduced you and it kind of raised my antennas up because I've been following this type of stuff for a long time and, and have, have dealt with blood pressure issues for a long time. And I just thought, you know, I need, I need to talk to you. So I kind of cornered you uh, at a break. Uh, yeah. We exchanged phone calls and then, and then here we are. Right. So, um, so it's been, it's been really good and you've helped open my eyes to stuff and we'll get into some of that in a minute here, but just for the benefit again of the audience, um, tell me a little bit about you, you know, your story and where you came from, how you ended up where you're at and um, take it from there. Yeah. And I'm, I'm so glad we met and that you cornered me that day. Cause I learned a lot from you as well. And, and for those of you who don't know, Brian is someone who really goes deep in his health. And so, um, you know, it's, it's admirable, especially if you're giving your clients that advice is like, Hey, you're someone who's doing it yourself, which is great. Mm -hmm. But, um, my background is I grew up on a cattle ranch in Idaho. We raised about a thousand head of black Angus and, um, my summers were spent moving sprinkler pipes and the planes would come and spray, you know, roundup on me. And so I didn't think that there was any problems with that because the, the reps, they said, oh, you can practically drink this stuff It's super safe. And, um, and I was, you know, suddenly, you know, in my late teens, I got eczema, I started getting more psoriasis like symptoms in my undergraduate work, but, um, but it wasn't until I was uh, studying pre-med at the University of Utah, um, that I had the realization, I said, man, they, you know, I've got to get some help. So I went to five different doctors up there. They all ran my blood work and they all said, Hey, good news, Reagan, nothing's wrong. And I was like, this can't be, I was gaining weight. I was achy. I couldn't, you know, I, I, I really had brain fog until about seven at night. And so school always came easy, 
but uh, in college, it just got harder and harder. And it wasn't because of the, the curriculum. It was because my health was failing me. And so it wasn't until I went to a naturopathic doctor who ran the right labs and said, hey, here's the problem. You've got elevated levels of thyroid peroxidase antibodies. So you've got Hashimoto's. So that realization allowed me to start working on my health in ways that, I, that had never been exposed to me. You know, I, I've always been interested in nutrition, interested in health, because the only way I could get out of farm work was to make the basketball team or football team. So I was extra motivated and not very gifted athletically, but I was always reading books on nutrition and things like that. And, and it was finally when I started eliminating some of the foods that were triggering the inflammation, um, taking some new therapies, that that's when I was able to get my health back. And then I ended up studying at a school in uh, Hawaii, which was an integrated medical school where I learned both Eastern and Western medicine and uh, graduated uh, and started my practice about 20 years ago and uh, have helped thousands of people with thyroid uh, issues. Uh, the primary people that I work with right now are, are people who are in their 50s and 60s and they want to optimize their health so they can enjoy things like retirement or they can enjoy things like, you know, bigger ambitions for the next phase of their life. But my, my real specialty is in those transitions where people want to go from healthy to healthier or from, you know, not really understanding what's going on in their health, but knowing there's a problem, uh, uncover what those problems are and then help move them to the next level. So how long, so you've been in business for about 20 years. So um, yeah. the, the, did you start out doing what you're doing right now? Or did that kind of, was that an evolutionary process? Or tell me a little bit about like where you started versus where you ended up. Well, I've always had um, just an obsession with finding the right treatments that can get people healthier, healthy in the least amount of time with the fewest side effects. Because you know, I've always had the core philosophy is, uh, you know, three things no death by neglect. I've seen so many people die um, 10, 15 years before they, they needed to because they didn't get the right tests ordered or they minimized their health. You know, they ignored it. They said, oh, I feel good. And just mm -hmm. because you feel good doesn't mean that you couldn't die from a heart attack tomorrow. I literally had a friend who was 50 and uh, he was died. Uh, we went mountain biking the day before and he was crushing me on the climb. He was super fit. And the next day he was out working on his bike in his garage and died of a massive heart attack, left three young kids. Wow. And wow. so, um, you know, number one, no death by neglect. Number two is when health improves, everything improves. This is where uh, a lot of people, they spend their life accumulating wealth and they neglect their health in the process. And uh, so, you know, the people who run in our circle, Brian, are entrepreneurs who are very ambitious and, and we get kind of our business can get the, the better half of us. And so I help mm -hmm. a lot of entrepreneurs create more balance and they realize that when they focus on their health, the business improves, their relationships improve, everything improves. And then the third thing is um, I wanna make uh, people's next decade their healthiest decade. And so that's where I'm always looking at the, the future focus. So, so back to your question is, have I always done it this way? Well, I've always had the core philosophies. Um, you know, my dad, he always said anything worth doing is worth doing well. And so mm -hmm. a lot of times I'd have to do a job twice because my dad said, that's not good enough. Go start over and do it again. Um, but same thing in my medical practice. I've always looked at what the best strategies are and brought those into, into my practice as quickly as I felt comfortable bringing those in. So, you know, right out of school, I brought on a neurologist. So we had a, you know, I had a Western doctor working directly with me and then I hired her daughter. And then, you know, at one time I had six different clinics in operation and that was really exciting. Um, and, but I've always brought in uh, the best therapies, but they always change because medicine is changing, you know, faster than almost anyone can keep up. Yeah, for sure. Um, and that is, um, you know, a key thing there with what you're saying, everything's always, always changing. And so, but, you know, I look at it in two different ways. One is, um, because I think a lot of people listening, I, I think anyways, I'm, I'm making a, an assumption, they're just based on conversations I have, is that, and this is how I was too, um, a decade ago, is that, you know, if you're feeling okay, then everything's okay, right? Right. Um, but the truth of the matter is, is by the time you really know something's wrong, it's really wrong, right? Um, so the, the two tracks really is the preventative side or the reactive side, right? Or the treatment side. 
Um, so the goal for, you know, I think with way I want to handle my health and, and what you're trying to do for people is really getting out in front of potential health issues um, and just knowing how to navigate that um, to prevent those future problems. So, you know, being that most people, I think, um, aren't really familiar with what we're even talking about. Um, how would you explain all of this to someone who may not know um, that this world exists of preventative care? Well, I think the best place to start would be, um, you know, what, what are your big health goals and what do you want to, you know, where do you want to end up in the next 10 years? Because if you look back 10 years and you say, okay, you know, I'm 45 now. So if I look back when I was 35, have I made progress in the last 10 years? And I would say yes, because I have objective data that I test myself on. I have labs to prove it. I have hill climbs on my mountain bike to prove it. I've got, mm -hmm. maybe I'm not as strong like on the bench press, but it's not something I even care about right now. Um, but I can do more pull-ups than I could when I was 35. So I think that's a better metric anyways. So, um, so ask yourself, are you healthier than you were 10 years ago? And then how old will you be 10 years from now? And what do you want your health to look like? Because what Western medicine is designed to do is to diagnose a problem and then treat the problem. So you mentioned blood pressure, and this is a common thing that we treat. The, the big issue with that is if you say, okay, well, I've got high blood pressure. Um, you go to your doctor, he tests your blood pressure. He says, sure enough, 160 over 100. This is a problem. Here's a beta blocker or here's a water pill and let's get your blood pressure down with some medication. Mm -hmm. But if you take it a step farther, it's like the question that you've got to ask, which you're asking and I'm asking all the time too, is why is it high in the first place? And so in order to discover why it's high in the first place, then there's other labs that need to be ran. So for those of you who are not familiar with functional medicine, what we do is we look for patterns in the blood. And so we'll see where different causes are showing up because we narrow those ranges. Conventional labs give you a parameter of 90% of the population's averages. And so if you look around, 90% of the, the population is not healthy. In fact, 60% of Americans have at least one chronic disease and half of those have three or more. So, so there's some, you know, it's, there's some big issues with the way that we're interpreting the numbers. And then there's other tests like stool tests, urine tests, and saliva tests that go even deeper to figure out where the interferences might be that are causing whatever health condition somebody has. Yeah, I think um, maybe going a little bit deeper in this, I think, um, again, when I'm trying to explain it to somebody, again, and I'm a financial guy, so uh, me trying to explain this doesn't always go real well. So if you're trying to explain the difference between like traditional medicine like you just did, and you, and you just touched on it, uh, but maybe going a little bit deeper. So traditional medicine, and then there's the space, I guess people would call it alternative medicine. And then you have the functional medicine and what other, whatever other categories that are there. Like, what is the real difference between some of those um, if somebody had to realize that what we're talking about here is not exactly what maybe they've been through with a, with a traditional doctor? Yeah. And I think the, the biggest thing is um, if you look at conventional, traditional medicine, everything needs to be medically necessary because your insurance is tied to that. And so if you go to your doctor and you're like, hey, I want to um, I want to get a six pack and I want to get stronger. Your doctor said, great. Um, what can I help you with? And you say, well, I don't know. And, and they run your labs and they'll say, well, everything looks good. Or maybe you have high cholesterol. Here's some some Lipitor, but really the medical model is there to manage disease and not manage health. If you come to uh, like someone who practices longevity medicine, like uh, my clinic or other clinics out there, then what we're going to do is say, okay, well, where are the biggest threats to your health right now? Where are the things that are showing up that are keeping you from making progress and from feeling your best, looking your best and performing your best? And then once we can un uncover those with the right tests, that's where people can really start to make progress because if we figure out the cause, then we can, you know, almost always find a solution to that, that cause. And so I, I think the flip side of that is in Western medicine um, is very heroic. You know, if you have a heart attack, you break an arm, you have a massive accident, 
you need reactive medicine. You want someone to react very quickly. And that's the beauty of it. It's, it's life-saving medicine. It's heroic medicine. And I, I love Western medicine for that fact. But if you're going and you say, hey, I really want to make my next 10 years the healthiest 10 years, then your doctor is going to tell you, well, eat, eat healthy and exercise more. And, and so it's like, great. Well, now, how do I do that? But on the longevity medicine, we have accountability partners. Like we have our, our fitness advisors, Tristan, and we have Nikki. We have our nutritional coaches. We have Ann, Annie, and, and Jenny. And then we also have uh, functional medicine practitioners who actually can give the team the right guidance so that you have coaching. It's you know no different than you and your financial planning. It's like, you know, people just do a 401k and try to put some money in there, or whatever their employer employer recommends. And you can come in there, you can say, hey, you could have a much better retirement if you make this shift, this shift, and this shift financially. Um, you're going to be a lot better off in 10 years. And so it's the same thing in, in health. What are some examples of things, you know, um, you and I have talked about like the vitamins that I take. We've talked about you know, bioregulators, we talked about peptides and IV infusions. And if somebody's listening to some of those conversations, they think that we were crazy, right? Uh, right. Just because of not understanding the terms or the things that you're doing. So um, I just mentioned a few things out there that um, came to my head, but what are, what are some of the things that, um, that you would be doing if following a preventative course? And what are some of those things do and why? I think probably the biggest thing is once we run your labs and that's everyone who engages with us, we look at blood labs up front and then we take the blood labs and we, we put treatment strategies together. Some of those are peptides. I'm a big fan of peptides because I find of all the medicines out there that I've explored and that I've, uh, you know, that we prescribe to thousands of, of our clients, the, the thing that moves the needle the, the fastest with the least amount of side effects are peptides. And so if you think about what a peptide is, well, the first peptide ever sequenced was insulin. And uh, that's been a life-saving peptide for millions, if not uh, you know, billions of people in the last hundred years. And, um, but then you can go further with peptides and you can say, well, insulin is one of those, but not everyone needs to be on insulin. It's very, peptides are really powerful, but there's other peptides that can improve digestion. There's peptides for um, increasing libido. There's peptides to help um, your body gain, all, gain muscle mass. And there's peptides to help with inflammation and soft tissue damage. And so there's there's thousands of peptides out there right now. We've sequenced about you know maybe 10% of those or about 700. Um, 286 of those are approved by the FDA for specific conditions. But peptides seem to be uh, at the forefront of all the treatment strategies that we put together just because our, our patients really enjoy them. They feel better on peptides, more uh, energy, they sleep better better mental clarity. And so um, that's uh, been one of the most exciting uh, developments. And that's one of the ways that we treat our clients, but we don't treat peptides like most doctors do, where you see like Manjuro or, or Ozembic or Wagovi, all these uh, GLP peptides being advertised for weight loss and the celebrities are all using it. The, the big problem and the difference in the way Western medicine uses peptides is you're doing a very high dose and they're not combining it with the specific muscle building program, or they're not putting peptides in there to circumvent the fact that people can lose muscle mass. And now we're seeing all the side effects that are coming out from the misuse of peptides. So mm -hmm. just like anything, you can misuse vitamin C. One, one basketball game, Brian, you'll find this kind of funny. Um, I gave my entire basketball team eight grams of vitamin C right before a game. I, I read a book and I was like, vitamin C is the answer. And, you know, I'm in 11th grade and, <laughs> and we all ended up with diarrhea, you know, so mm -hmm. we lost the game. So even natural <laughs> medicine can be um, you know, dangerous, but um, right. if anything's misused and that's where, you know, the difference between 
you know, Western medicine is let's treat a symptom and, you know, we, who cares about the cause? And yes, there's going to be side effects and the greater the risk of medicine, the higher you're going to pay for it. You're going to pay the price financially, but you'll also pay the price from what it does to your body. But um, we use peptides where we stack them together. So, and we dose it very small so that we're just reminding your body how to, to behave in a really healthy way. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing we use cell core, which you're familiar with that. It's a whole body cleanse um, using carbon technology. So we're just mimicking the same uh, way that, that mushrooms clean up the environment. We use fulvic and humic acid and specific binders. We also put um, you know, different organic um, molecules on there so that your body can get um, built up and, and uh, recharged while your body's letting go of things that are not useful for it anymore. Um, and then the other therapies are like some of the biohacking, you know, light therapy is really good. We, we advocate getting outside two hours a day for all of our, our clients, uh, exercising 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes at night. Uh, I can't tell you how many people have said that's changed my life. Just the fact that I'm now given myself permission to get outside. You know, it's, it's just mm -hmm. uh, small things like that go a long way. So, so that's probably some of the core things that we do when people, in, engage and there's you know a lot of depth and little pathways we could go on on that as well yeah and i find too and and you know for some people again listening um they may not really understand half of what you just said but i think the the because that it's terms that they're not familiar and i deal with that in my space too when i start talking about different strategies it's not the mainstream strategy and so there's a learning curve there and what i have found is that um I'll listen to things that, and sometimes I'll get finished listening to it or read a book. And sometimes I'm done reading that book. And I really don't understand everything in that book when it relates to the, to what we're talking about here. But I, what I have found, cause I've been researching this stuff now for, I guess I'm in my sixth, seventh year of really diving into it. Um, is that it's definitely a learning curve. It's a layering effect. So the more you hear something, you know, the more it makes more sense and it just keeps making more and more sense. Um, and you start learning a little bit more about that. So that's the whole point of, of what I'm trying to do here is just introduce, introduce the idea of, of, you know, functional medicine and preventative care and peptides and, and all these types of things, um, just to maybe uh, help some people realize that this world is out there. I mean, this stuff is real. It's becoming more and more mainstream. It's, it's pretty interesting how, um, um, you hear about stuff more than you did just even a three or four years ago, right? Um, and I think that's just going to continue to change. I don't know how you feel about that, but um, I listened to Peter Diamandes, which I know you're familiar of, and of course, Dan Sullivan. And yep. they talk about the advancements in medicine. Uh, if you ever listen to Peter Diamandes, he'll kind of blow your mind with the stuff that he talks about because he's in deep with some of the brightest minds in the world, right? Uh, uh, very Harvard, Harvard educated doctors that are just on the cutting edge of stuff. And, but it's really, it's really fascinating to listen to him. But um, one of the things that that him and Dan both, uh, I heard one of them say this, I don't remember who it was, is that they were saying that the cost associated with um, accessing more advanced treatments is pretty steep, right? It can be pretty mm. steep. Yeah. Uh, and, and so it's usually, you know, when you think about the, the, the world of medicine and whatnot, um, we kind of think that it's just this, this pharmaceutical company sitting in a lab, um, spending trillions of dollars. And there's some truth to that, I guess, but really the pursuit of, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but the pursuit of youth or the need to battle a disease is, is in, in somebody's situation. Right. Yeah. And so somebody with a lot of money, is hiring the best doctors, the best scientists to say, look, I've got this, let's figure something out. Money's not an object. I just want to be healthy. And so they're, they're kind of guinea pigs. They're biohackers, if you will, yeah. um, just trying to figure out what works. And so they're investing in all of this. And now there's venture capital, you know, that's flowing into that kind of stuff and, um, and hedge funds and that kind of stuff. But, um, and then when something works, then it becomes more mainstream. It's it gets picked up, and then and then it then it kind of takes off, right? And so there's a cost that's super high, and then eventually that cost will come down as it's scaled. Um, 
so, but my point of bringing this up, it's a natural conversation, right? So when I'm, I'm talking with clients or I'm talking with family and friends, discussion always shifts to cost. Um, and I think it is a legitimate uh, mm-hmm. conversation because uh, most people, when they think about medical, they think about co-pays, right? They think about going to the doctor and handling the card. I mean, that's the first thing they ask, right? Do you have your insurance card? <laughs> no, no matter what you're doing. Uh, yep. But most of what we're talking about here is not, it's not covered by insurance. So the idea of paying out of pocket um, can be a barrier for some people to even enter into that, right? So what would you, what would you say to somebody who is um, kind of just throwing their hand up at that because it's not covered by insurance? What would be a response you would give? I, I think you bring up a good point because um, like if you think of genetics, like Craig Venter, this is Peter Diamandis talks about this a lot. Craig Venter spent $100 million getting his entire genome sequence. It took like 10 years. And now you can get it for a couple hundred bucks and you yeah. can get a lot of great data out of it. So, so the cost does, you know, it's, it's the um, ultra wealthy who fortunately like uh, people like Brian Johnson, he's, I uh, do you know, Brian Johnson, the uh, he, he sold uh, he, he sold uh, one of the big businesses uh, like not PayPal, but the other merchant account business and anyway so all he's focused on is longevity and so it's crazy how much money he spends every year and and nice thing about that is is i can learn from guys like brian Mm -hmm. johnson or craig venter and and we can bring this into a into the practice at a fraction of the cost but um but if you think about your health insurance you want to think of it this is the same way you think of your automobile insurance how often do you want to use your automobile insurance? Never, right? It's like, right. you need to have it. It's, it's, it's there for a rainy day. But uh, unfortunately, the way that our system's set up is everything is what's considered medically necessary. And in order for things to be covered by insurance, you've got to have a diagnosis and a disease for your insurance to pay. Yeah, there's some, some fun like wellness things that they'll cover like an annual visit, but that's not going to do anything to move the needle. And so at some stage, I think every American, and, and I'd have to say that, that COVID accelerated our growth faster than anything because people suddenly had this realization that it's not the medical system that's going to protect me. I've got to start investing in my health. And, and that's where uh, I think it's the best investment people can make is in their health. And every year, my wife's like, you know how much money you spent on peptides and this and biohacking, you bought this piece of equipment. And I'm like, that was, I'm so glad next year, I'm going to spend even more. And she's, you know, she, she appreciates it because she sees the progress and the whole family uh, benefits from that. Um, But the other thing is, if you look at the cost of it, like working with a doctor like Peter Atia, it's 150,000 a year. We have doctors in our group and it's well over 100,000 to work with these these doctors. Um, It is an investment. If you've got the money, that's awesome. I can tell you on there's programs that you can do for about 90% less than that. And you can still get some very phenomenal results. And we've got objective data to back that up. But, but I would um, recommend to people to budget out, um, you know, anywhere from 10 to $15,000 a year, if you don't have any chronic diseases, if you've got if you do have some chronic issues, but you want to get them addressed naturally. It may be 25K, it may be 35K. It's not unusual for people that need to invest that kind of money in their health. And, you know, if you look at that on the flip side and you say, well, um, you know, well, I'm spending money on my health anyways, uh, you know, because there's a study that was done by Charles Swab, that agency. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that on this group or not, but that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Um, But anyway, Charles Swab, they, these uh, financial advisors, they said the average couple after the age of of 65 um, needs to have at least $330,000 saved from medical expenses, additional medical expenses is the number one cause of bankruptcy in our country, our medical expenses. So, you know, it's the same thing with finances. If you look at investing a little bit in your health right now, in the future, it saves you dividends on future health expenses, which are drug surgery. It's the time that you can't enjoy your life the most. So um, I think budgeting, uh, you know, 15K a year is a really smart thing for people to do. Mm-hmm. 
and I don't know the studies uh, necessarily, but um, the way I've understood it is that one of the fastest growing demographics are people that are, you know, 90, 100 years old. There's more and more people getting older, right? And living longer. Um, yep. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that is the case, right? Um, and so, but I hear clients a lot of times will say things to me like, um, yeah, I'm going to take this trip with my family. I want to, I want to uh, use this money and take a trip with my family while I'm still able to. Um, mm -hmm. I hear that a lot from clients. While I'm um, still able to, yeah. That, while I'm still able yeah. to. And, and I think about this because, again, my, uh, my knowledge of the, the world of finance, right, but also my understanding of what we're talking about here. And I, and I think, man, there's got to be, like, how do you synergize this stuff in a way that people can understand that when you're investing for the future, um, what does that look like? I mean, we take, I, you know, I do this still, even with the knowledge that I have, you know, if I'm feeling good, I just kind of take it for granted, right? It's not until you're not feeling good that you're kind of wishing you felt better. Um, so how do, how do we um, better educate clients on, hey, you know, we're not just trying to get you to retirement or being financially free. We want you to have a really long, productive, healthy life. Um, I've said this in other podcasts, but if you think about it for a minute, if you're 60 years old, let's say, and you retire, and then you live to 100, that's 40 years, yeah. right? Well, if you think about that for a second, if you started working at 20, that's 40 years. So you're yeah. kind of at the halfway point. And so, you know, and, and if you were 20, and you kind of, and you're 60 and feeling how you feel today, um, which could, could be pretty good, but it's probably not what you felt like when you were 20. And then if you take when you're 60 and how you could assume that you could potentially feel when you're 100, there's just a lot, like you're, you're trying to get to this freedom, this time freedom point in your life, because that's really what retirement's all about is buying back your time so you can do what you want. Um, the, the health part of that is, comes right behind that. I mean, you got to be healthy. You got to feel good enough to actually enjoy um, enjoy your retirement. So again, um, trying to think through how do you pull that together, and which is again exactly why I, why I'm doing this uh, today is talking through that a little bit to um, to just try to get people to see. But um, you know, I began. I think I've mentioned this before, but I began researching um, this world of preventative care. And Dave Asprey is the one that kind of got me. And I don't even remember how I came across him. I don't know if it was a podcast. I really don't know what it was. Mm. Uh, but he, he wrote a book back in 2016 called Headstrong. Yeah. Um, and, and I read that book and it just opened my eyes. They're like, man, there's a whole other world out there of, of stuff, let's just call it, that I was totally oblivious to. Because you just don't hear about it anywhere. Um, and once that door was swung open for me, it, it just never got closed. Matter of fact, that door just became a big garage door. And so i I consume books like it's going out of style and, um, you know, visit with people like you and, and just do a lot of things to try to increase my knowledge. Uh, not that I want to become a practitioner. I just want to try to figure out, um, you know, health for myself and my family. And then, um, and the more I, educate myself, the, the more I want to share it with my clients, like, hey, yeah. you, you need to be thinking about this. Um, but um, what I have found is, and it's, and it's very similar to my business, too, is I think people think about financial stuff like this, too, like they'll Google search stuff, and now the chat GPT and all this stuff, trying to learn and learn and learn and learn and learn. But you find that over time that there's so many rabbit holes that you can run down. There's so many things that just you just can't understand unless you really have a practice doing it, right? Working with lots of people and seeing how lots of different things happen. So, um, and I don't remember exactly what it was, but I, I had jumped off and said, you know what, I, I need to start, you know, I'm learning stuff, but I need to actually try to apply this somewhere, some way, shape or form, right? Not really even knowing what that looks like. So um, I knew enough to know that I needed to find a functional medical doctor. And so I did that. And that was really eye opening with all the lab work and just the conversations uh, was pretty incredible. Um, instead of spending two minutes with the doctor, I actually spent an hour and a half with the doctor. That was, that was a big deal. 
And then working with you after we connected in Chicago, you know, having these calls and just spending time educating, um, that's just a totally different experience. And um, it's still time for money type of thing, but it's not the same relationship of hurrying up and getting walking out with a script. It's it's taking time to learn and and do the due diligence and um, and really try to figure out okay where you're at and then what do we need to be doing next, right? Yeah. Um, but I guess what I'm getting at here is that for someone who was like me, who began to realize that there was more than just waiting around to get sick, where does someone actually start? And you, you touched on this a little bit um, a minute ago with just taking some tests, but I think that's one of the challenges too, is that even from in my business, there's so many parallels to the medical field and the financial business. Oh, yeah. you, you got the testing, you got the diagnosis, it's all the same, and then follow up and, and it's just different, different, uh, uh, subject right but I find that you know when you have a path laid out ahead of you and you and I've talked about this it's like look I can chase rabbits all day but yep. if you give me a path to run down um, that makes a lot more sense you know tell me what I need to eat tell me what kind of exercise I need to do tell me what I need to take when um, yeah. to where I don't have to think about it um, and try to figure out what else I need to do. My, my vitamin refrigerator, I got a whole refrigerator just for vitamins, <laughs> you know, it's, and, and so that's, you know, that's a lot of uh, me just researching stuff, but it's also just, you know, you and the doctors that I talk with to, to, to know what needs to be taken for different things. So, um, so where does somebody begin? That was a roundabout uh, way to ask, like, if somebody was going to say, you know, this sounds interesting, like, I want to get started and going down this path. Where, where would somebody start? Yeah. And um, that's where just, you know, looking at what you want to accomplish in your health. So start by making your health the number one priority. So you have to feel it internally. Nobody can motivate you, but I can tell you uh, eventually each one of us has to confront our health. I would rather confront my health while I'm healthy instead of when I have a crisis. I've felt health crises. They're no fun. I just talked to a client uh, earlier today and he's got a big insurance company that he runs and he's always on the go. But what he said, he's like, I'm so grateful that I just have that little pause in the morning where I do my peptides. We have our check in calls because it, the, to your point, Brian, he says it just keeps me on track. And I know that he and and we reran his labs and his markers all look phenomenal. So so the best place to start is get your blood work ran. Um, and but if you want to run it with me or if you've got a great doctor who can run the right markers, you want to run a super comprehensive panel with hormones and everything in it. Um, you can easily go to the peptideexpert.com and that's where we have a easy form you can fill out um, and get your blood work ran uh, with us. And then uh, myself or one of our uh, functional medicine practitioners will be able to go through that with you. Um, and then the other places, um, you know, if you guys are interested in going a little deeper, then you can listen to my podcast on reasonable health. And I'm going to have you on my podcast too, Brian. I think we, I, I bring on, I, to your point, I think wealth uh, is, um, and money is one of those things that stresses people out more than anything. And it's, mm -hmm. it's actually an indicator for positive health is if you have positive finances. And so um, that's a correlation that's uh, been drawn for years that I've always been sensitive to. So love the work you're doing. But um, but yes, people can just get their blood work, work ran, go to the peptideexpert.com. And we're happy to take care of you from there. So um, one of the things that I have um, thought through in the past, but I know it's a question in some people's mind is that, you know, there's, there's different factions here's here's one thing too that's kind of crazy um just the different masterminds that i'm involved in and and strategic codes for instance is that um it really is a small world the 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 world of finance is really small the the world of of folks that that know and do your kind of work is is small and it's these yeah. little factions um around the country and it's not, you know, i don't know what the statistics are i'm not even going to try to pretend that i know what they are but it's 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 growing, but it's still a minority. So finding the right doctor to do this stuff isn't going to be just, you know, looking up in the yellow pages. And if people know what the yellow pages are, Google search, right, uh, for, for a doctor. So, so um, you know, and I know you're in Utah, 
So if somebody is wanting to work with, let's just use you as an example. If somebody wants to work with you, um, how does that work with as far as like testing and getting care and like um, just what does that relationship look like? Yeah, so we, um, a, at least 80% of our client base is outside of Utah. Um, we have clients as far as uh, Singapore, Pakistan, France, uh, uh, Chile, Argentina. I mean, all over. It's crazy. It's, it's pretty amazing. And so we can, we can work with you wherever you are. Um, if you are in the United States, that's the easiest because we just send you to a lab core. We'll, you walk in, get your blood work ran. It's a very simple process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in St. Louis, it's the Quest is the big one here in St. Louis for testing, uh, for blood work and, and that type yep. of stuff anyway. So, so like um, when, when you're thinking about this stuff, like when I first started um, thinking about this is that I thought it to be like vitamins and peptides. That's really the way I viewed it. Um, and then the more I have learned is that it's also, of course, about diet and exercise. So if somebody's yeah. thinking about diet, because there's a lot of fad type diets out there that people um, follow. And one of the ones that I have, you know, da dabbled with on and off, and I've had some success with it is like a keto diet. Mm -hmm. uh, but what kind of diets, if there, if there, if there are, uh, if you want to call them diets, uh, whatever you want to call them, but like, what's the, what is the, what are maybe the uh, couple of key things that people need to be thinking about when it comes to their diet? Well, I think um, the biggest thing when it comes to nutrition is if you're over 50, then you need more protein. And that's loss of proteostasis is one of the nine hallmarks of aging. And so we like all of our clients to get at least one gram of protein per pound of body weight. So if you're 200 pounds, that is 200 grams of protein. And just to give context to your listeners, that's about two pounds of meat. And so people, people's eyes are like, what? But I can tell you, if you start your morning out and you get a good source of protein, you get somewhere between 50 and 80 grams of protein in your first meal, uh, you're not going to have sugar cravings. And then by the time lunch hits, if you eat protein again, then by the time you get to dinner, um, that's a great time to add in carbohydrates and you can have a lot more flexibility as long as you've got your proteins in. But we're big fans of protein, big fans of getting about a pound of vegetables in a day, making sure they're cooked so that your digestive system can absorb those. And as long as you follow that, then you have some, you know, there's, there's some wiggle room in the evening for other things, but, um, but that's it. Whatever, whatever you want to call that diet, uh, that's, that's what we advocate primarily. This just came to my mind because um, I have this conversation with family a lot and, and friends too, is the difference. And, in, in, you know, when you talk about like uh, two pounds of meat, um, it's just not two pounds of meat that's on sale, right? It's right. The, quali the quality has something to do with that too, right? And I don't big necessarily want to get into a rabbit hole, but there's a big difference between like free range and um, grass fed and, and maybe speak on that a little bit as to what the difference is between like a factory oriented meat and, and what we were just talking about. Yeah. So, um, you know, on our cattle ranch, when we were in heavy volume, we would send the cattle to the feedlot. So they would almost double their weight in the span of three months because they're being fed oats. We're giving them injections of growth hormone. We're like, really want to beef them up because, uh, cattle ranchers get paid by the pound typically. Um, and so uh, that's the meat that most Americans are eating. But if you uh, like elk, um, eat the leaner meats, um, they're, you're, you're going to get a lot more out of that, uh, that protein, and you'll have fewer calories. So, you know, you, you will burn fat if you want to burn fat, but elk, uh, bison, grass fed, um, grass finished is kind of the key thing you want to look at when it comes to your beef. And red meat's got a really, uh, you know, the Heart Association did some real damage in their recommendations against red meat for a lot of years. They've since changed their tune a little bit, but 
Um, if people are telling you red meat's not, not good for you, they just haven't done enough science. And, and yes, I'm biased. I realize that I can't work with anyone who doesn't eat a little bit of red meat because my family will disown me, but, um, <laughs> but it's actually really good. And then, um, you know, you can eat a little bit of chicken, a little bit of turkey, um, eat some fish. If you can, if you can stomach sardines, anchovies, those are the best fish for you. The smaller fish have less mercury, less heavy metals. Um, so yeah, there's, there's amazing food out there. Um, and it's so much easier to access that food than it ever has been. Um, but now it's just, it's just up to people to look at the label. Yeah. So, um, for those who want to take a deeper dive, I mean, we've, we've kind of just scratched the surface here, right? Uh, but if somebody wants to take a deeper dive, I know you've written a couple of books. I mean, you and I share the drive to torture ourselves, right? With yeah. writing books and hosting podcasts. I mean, I don't think people realize, I didn't really realize how much work's involved to produce the content, but I just know how important it is. And I appreciate you for, you know, taking time to come on, uh, but also just the books and all the stuff you're, you're, you know, you're experimenting, doing things, and then you're bringing back what's working, um, which is a model that I follow as well. But for those who want to de uh, dive deeper into all that, like what books do you have? Where do they find those? Where can they find your podcast, your website, et cetera? Um, so the my most uh, and thanks, Brian. It, it is hard making content because you never know how it's going to land. But um, man, it's been so rewarding when I have people that come up to me and they're, I've been listening to your podcast for eight years and it's so nice to meet you, fine or whatever. But yeah. um, so my podcast is uh, Unreasonable Health is um, where you can find it. It's on Stitcher, iTunes, all those channels. And then uh, my most recent book is called The Peptide Blueprint. Um, and that's a really great book to learn about the Accelerate Wellness Program. And then Never Stop Healing is probably, for those of you who just want a do-it-yourself manual and guide, pick up Never Stop Healing. And um, it's got everything step-by-step, play-by-play. I spoke to one of my clients who's a medical doctor today, and he's read the book twice. And him and his wife have put almost everything into action. And he said it's changed his life. And it was like, I'm so glad I wrote the book because half the time you wonder if anyone's going to read it. So <laughs> no, I, I did read, read it. And I thought it was an excellent book. I haven't read your new one yet. I need to, I need to pick that up. But then oh, what about your, your, your website? The name of the company is uh, East West Health. East West Health. And so our, our clinic website is AccuEastWest.com. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then uh, you can also go to the peptide blueprint.com, which is an easier site to navigate just for getting your blood work ran. So either one of those. Gotcha. Well, um, we're up on a little bit of time here and we covered a lot. Um, and hopefully, you know, uh, people found this, uh, rewarding. I think this, this conversation can go on for hours. Uh, you get a few people together that enjoy this stuff. It just keeps going and going and going. Right. Um, but I do appreciate you coming on. Is there anything else that you would, would say as we wrap up, uh, to just encourage people to, um, consider this as part of their, I'll call it their retirement planning. Um, what would be some, some last words for you? You know, I think, um, there's a Chinese proverb that would be helpful to consider as, as people are on this, this transition in life, which is, you know, when was the best time to plant a tree? And a lot of us would say, oh, it's today, but it was actually 20 years ago. And so, um, you know, imagine your future self um, thanking you. There's this concept called compressed morbidity. And, and my, my grandfather, um, you know, he was a perfect example of this. And he, he walked around with a peg leg because he uh, was in a horse race and the horse pinned him up against the post and he got gangrene. And so they cut his leg off. He, this was like 100 years ago. He lived to be 93. But my grandfather, um, just an incredible human being who, uh, you know, lived his life to the fullest. He had no dependency. In fact, he used to collect rare coins. And one day some uh, burglars broke into his house and, and he heard the commotion. He was down in his woodshed. He was in his 80s and he grabbed his gun and came upstairs and they pushed my grandmother over and were threatening uh, to, to kill him and all these things. So he shot one of the guys in the leg. Uh, the other guy just laid down and defecated and, and peed himself right there. But, um, but my grandfather, uh, you know, he kept living his life in a, another 10 years. 
And um, one night he was you know, doing what he did every day. He went to sleep and he died in his sleep really fast. And so most humans, the last 10 years of our life are the worst 10 years of our life. And so I want to make sure that, you know, as you plant the tree, think of the last 10 years and, you know, maybe we can all have the shortened death, which is kind of a weird thing to talk about when it comes to health, but the healthier you are, the faster that you'll, you'll die. He was a very healthy individual, someone who I admire. And so, uh, so yeah, that would be my parting words. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. We want to shorten that death. That's a good, good note to end it on. Yeah. So, uh, so, hey, I, I do appreciate it. I know you're busy. We had a tough time getting together to even do this, but um, but I do appreciate you coming on and, uh, and sharing your wisdom with us. Thanks so much, Brad. Great to be here. All right, we'll see you later. Thanks for listening to today's show. If you liked what you heard, be sure to subscribe on YouTube and Spotify so that you can receive notifications when we release new episodes. I'm Brian Scribonia, and this is the Common Sense Financial Podcast. Well, thank you for listening to the Forbes Top 10 Rated Common Sense Financial Podcast. Before you go, I want to encourage you to jump over to brianscribonia.com to access the full archive of blogs and podcasts. And if you want to be the first in line to get new content, you can sign up for free on the Brian Scribonia website as well. If you're not following Brian on all the social channels, we'd love to have you join in on the conversation. Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, he's there. Lastly, if you've enjoyed listening to today's podcast or if you have found value in any of our content, help spread the word by sharing our videos, podcasts, and posts wherever you get them. We greatly appreciate it and are glad that you took the time to join us today. Securities offered only by duly registered individuals through Madison Avenue Securities, LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. Advisory services offered only by duly registered individuals through Scribonia Wealth Management, a registered investment advisor. Tax services offered only through Scribonia Tax Consulting. Mass does not offer build banking or tax advice. Scribonia Financial Group, LLC, Scribonia Wealth Management, LLC, Scribonia Insurance Services, LLC, Scribonia Tax Consulting, and Build Banking are not affiliated with Mass. Scribonia Wealth Management, LLC, is a registered investment advisor. Advisory services are only offered to clients and prospective clients where Scribonia Wealth Management, LLC, and its representatives are properly licensed or exempt from licensure. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any references to protection, safety, or lifetime income generally refer to fixed insurance products, never securities or investments. Insurance guarantees are backed by the financial strength and claims-paying ability of the issuing carrier. This podcast is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Build Banking is a DBA of Scribonia Insurance Services, LLC. Benefits and guarantees are based on the claims paying ability of the insurance company, not FDIC insured. Results may vary. Any descriptions involving life insurance policies and its use as an alternative form of financing or risk management techniques are provided for illustration purposes only, will not apply in all situations, may not be fully indicative of any present or future investments, and may be changed at the discretion of the insurance carrier, general partner, and or manager, and are not intended to reflect guarantees on securities performance. The term build banking, private banking alternatives, or specially designed life insurance contracts are not meant to insinuate that the issuer is creating a real bank for its clients or communicating that life insurance companies are the same as traditional banking institutions. This material is educational in nature and should not be deemed as a solicitation of any specific product or service. Build banking is offered by Scribonia Insurance Services LLC only and is not offered by Madison Avenue Securities LLC. Our firm is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein, provided by the third parties, have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by our firm. References to build banking, private banking alternatives, or specially designed life insurance contracts are not meant to insinuate that the issuer is creating a real bank for its clients or communicating that life insurance companies are the same as traditional banking institutions. This material is informational in nature and should not be deemed as a solicitation of any specific product or service. Build banking is not FDIC insured. Build Banking is offered by Scribonia Insurance Services, LLC only, and is not offered by Madison Avenue Securities, LLC, nor Scribonia Wealth Management, LLC.